today, Ryan Lemon, and our special guest, Pau Morilla from London and Capital. Uh, Pau is the CIO of uh, uh, London Capital for the past 10 years. For me, in 2023, the equity space is going to be a space of discrimination, it's going to be a space of dispersion. There will be opportunities, and in particular, one needs to be differentiated between three areas within the equity space. Well, indeed, uh, Pau, we also at Finamaze believe that there will be a difference in uh, the sectors, the subsectors of the S&P 500 performance. Perhaps is the time of the return of the active asset management versus the passive asset management. The U.S. economy is exhibiting some some strength. Uh, so, should a recession happen, we would expect the recession to be relatively mild if there is a mild recession, rather than a cliff type of of recession. Uh, resilient sectors, consumer staple kind sectors. Um, sectors that have this inherent uh, resilience or whose earnings are not very cyclical, I think they should do reasonably well. Ryan, I know that you also look at the stock markets from the global perspective and you can see some differentiation potential potentially in 2023. Absolutely, Mehdi. So into 2023, there are lots of opportunities that are here to pick up. One of them is uh, emerging markets, as you mentioned, on, on which we were quite positive in 2022, particularly emerging markets uh, with currencies back to the dollar that are energy exporting. There are other geography, geographies, for example, like in South America, where some stock picking can be done, some countries in Asia. So production will start moving from China to India, India, could make a, a, a nice strength story into 2023. So there's some stock stock picking to be done there. Indonesia as well. I think the area where one needs to be much more cautious are sectors uh, that are much more correlated to consumer demand, your, your, your more cyclical areas, your industrials and your consumer cyclicals. Those could suffer, those potentially I think will suffer and those will be the areas that I would be a lot more uh, mindful of. Our forecast that oil will go up, uh, it will not stay where it is uh, today on geopolitical grounds and on the lack of investments on the upstream side. So commodities have underperformed largely in 2022 and we do expect in 2023 to see a comeback, especially on weaker dollar because we do expect dollar to weaken from, from here. It was difficult to find that complement in 2022, but I expect 2023 to be a slightly more traditional environment where discrimination will pay off and where uh, there will be places to hide. And I think that, that gold could well uh, be one of those. For 2022, we had uh, uh, two relative portfolios. On the one hand, consumer staples versus tech. That was long consumer staples and short in tech. It did plus 17% year to date. And also one which is large cap versus uh, mid and small caps, which did plus 12 and a half percent. So indeed, uh, 2022 hit differently, different components of the U.S. Uh, markets. And uh, definitely it will be doing the same 2023 and an overall participation through an, uh, uh, an ETF might not be the best strategy. There will be some differentiation. Uh, between different uh, subsectors of uh, of the stock markets, between different geographies, and here, of course, uh, Europe and the US might not perform as well as um, as other emerging markets. So all this puts me into the consideration that active asset management and the cherry picking is probably will be a very strong differentiating factor versus passive uh, asset management. And know that both of you are involved uh, in active asset uh, management, and, and so are we. Thank you, Pao. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mehdi. And uh, let I let you join me in order to wish all our viewers happy holidays and uh, to tell them that you are in, impatient to see how January will unfold and looking forward to our next episode. Thank you very much, both.